I'm not sure. Have you ever lived in Encino, California? Yes. Okay. When did you first begin living in Encino, California? Gee, I'm not sure. Are you familiar with the residents in Encino, California on Havenhurst Avenue? Yes. Have you ever lived there? Yes. And do you know whether <coughs> do you know whether you lived there in June of 1977? 77. I'm not sure. But you do recall living at that address, at the Havenshurst address, is that right? Yes. When did you cease living at the Havenshurst address? I don't remember. Do you presently live at the Havenshurst address? No. Okay. Have you ever seen Raynard Jones at the house on Havenshurst Avenue? I saw him at the gate one time as I remember trying to get in my question to you have you ever seen him in the house on Havenhurst Avenue I think one time he was inside that I saw him so your answer is yes it's foggy I'm sorry So your answer is yes, that you have seen him in your house on Havenhurst? I'm not sure. <clears throat> Mr. Jackson, do you recall your deposition being taken on October the 19th, 1989? Yes. Okay. Page 24, I call your attention to this question, line one. Has Raynard ever visited you at your home? And your answer at line two, he has been there. Do you recall that question and that answer? No. Okay. How many times have you seen Raynard Jones at your house on Havenhurst Avenue. Gee, I, I wouldn't remember. Have you ever listened to an audio cassette tape in the presence of Raynard Jones in any location? No, not that I remember. Is it that you don't remember or that you have not? I have not. <clears throat> Have you ever seen Raynard Jones in the studio of your house on Havenhurst Avenue? I don't remember, sir. Is it that you don't remember or that you have not seen him in your studio of your house at Havenhurst Avenue? I don't remember. Have you ever seen Raynard Jones at your home on Havenhurst accompanied by other people. It's foggy, but I think he had a friend with him. And when would that have been? I don't remember. Do you know whether that would have been in June of 1977? I really don't remember. Have you and uh, the Jacksons ever conducted a musical tour called the Victory Tour? Yes. In what year was that? Eighty something. Did the Victory Tour take place at any time during 1984? It could have. But is it your testimony that you do not know when the Victory Tour began? I'm not positive. I'm bad with dates. Do you know a person by the name of Johnny Ray Nelson? Yes. And how do you know him? 
I think he, Johnny Ray, was my next door neighbor in Indiana. Has Johnny Ray Nelson ever been an employee of yours? No, not that I know of. testimony that Johnny Ray Nelson has never been employed by you or is that you don't remember whether he was employed by you? I'm not sure, sir. Call your attention to page 83 of your deposition taken on October the 19th, 1989. At line 25, do you recall this question being asked relative to Johnny Ray Nelson? Has he ever worked for you? Line 25, page 83. Page 84, line one, yes. Do you recall that question, and do you recall giving that answer? No. Okay. Is it your testimony here today that the, the answer that you gave in response to that question on October 1989, 1989 is not accurate? I can't remember what he did. That's not my question. My question to you is, are you contending that the answer that you gave to the question in your deposition in October 1989, is that inaccurate? I'm not sure. Is it true that Johnny Ray Nelson traveled with the Victory Tour? I'm not sure. true that during the period 1983 to 1986, you received information that Raynard Jones was complaining that you and the Jacksons were copying his music. Is that true? Repeat your question. Is it true that during the period 1983 through 1986, you received information that Raynard Jones was complaining that you and the Jacksons were copying his music? I'm not sure of the dates. Did there come a time when you received information that Raynard Jones was complaining that you and the Jacksons were copying his music? Yes. When was that? I'm not sure. Was that before or after you moved to California? I think it was after we moved to California. And from whom did you receive that information? I'm not sure. Did you ever receive that information from Johnny Ray Nelson? What information? That you and the Jacksons were copying Raynard Jones's music. Could you repeat your question, sir? Did you receive information from Johnny Ray Nelson at any time during the period 1983 to 1986 that Raynard Jones was complaining that you and the Jacksons were copying his music? I don't remember. Is it that you don't remember or that you did not receive such information from Johnny Ray Nelson? I don't remember. Okay. So you don't remember whether you received information from Johnny Ray Nelson during the period 1983 to 1986 that Raynard Jones was complaining that you and the Jacksons were copying his music. I don't remember the dates. I don't remember. I'm not asking you, we'll strike the dates. You said yourself that uh, you had received information that Raynard Jones was complaining that you and the Jacksons were copying his music. And I ask you, what year was that? Do you recall that? What's your question? My question to you is, you have testified here that you received information that Raynard Jones was complaining 
that you and the Jacksons were copying his music. Is that correct? Yes. My question to you is, when did you receive that information? I don't remember. My question to you is, from whom did you receive that information? I don't know. My question to you is, did Johnny Ray Nelson ever convey information to you that Raynard Jones was complaining that you and the Jacksons were copying his music? No, right. Johnny Ray Nelson? Yes. No. Mr. Jackson, I call your attention to page 82 of your deposition taken on October 19, 1989. Question at page 8, what people? Answer beginning at line 9. Well, one of the friends, one of our next door neighbors, who's a guy named Ray Nelson. Even Ray Nelson said once we succeeded and left Gary, Indiana, we had hit after hit record. And he said Raynard would come to him and say, don't that sound like my sound? Don't this part sound like the song I wrote? And he would try to say that we stole his song. We didn't even write the songs, let alone take them. Do you recall that question? Well, you didn't now, my question to you is, do you recall give that question and responding as I have read to you at your deposition on October the 19th, 1989? I do remember Johnny Ray Nelson being angry at Raynard. Um, Johnny Ray saying something of the sort that Raynard is trying to take advantage of us because we became very successful and he didn't and we took off into superstardom and he didn't and so he was trying to find any excuse anything to <laughs> to get back at us when did mr johnny ray nelson tell you that i don't remember okay. My question to you was, did you, do you recall the question that I asked relative to your deposition and the answer that I read to you? Do you recall that question and giving the answer that I read to you? Could you repeat that again? The question at page 82, line 8, what people? Answer beginning at line 9. Well, one of the friends, one of our next door neighbors who is a guy named Ray Nelson, even Ray Nelson said once, we succeeded and left Gary, Indiana. We had hit, <clears throat> hit after hit record. And he said Raynard would come to him and say, don't that sound like my sound? Don't this part sound like the song I wrote? And he would try to say that we stole his song. We didn't even write the songs, let alone take them. Do you recall that question and, you, and that part of your answer? Oh, I remember. Okay. Was that which I've read to you as part of your answer accurate at the time that you gave it. If I said it, it must be accurate. Right. Now, during the victory tour, Mr. Jackson, did you and Johnny Ray Nelson discuss Raynard Jones? I don't remember. Is it that you don't remember whether you discussed him or that you did not discuss Raynard Jones with Johnny Ray Nelson? I don't remember if his name was brought up or not. Okay. Did you ever talk with Johnny Ray Nelson about Raynard Jones at the property on Havenhurst? I don't remember. Do you recall in your deposition of October 19, 1989 at page 83, line 7, the question, have you ever talked with Ray Nelson about Raynard Jones? Your answer at line 9, answer, yeah. Question at page 10, but you don't know when? Answer, no. Question at page 12, do you know where? answer no could have been Havenhurst. Could you have talked with uh, Johnny Ray Nelson about Raynard Jones at the Havenhurst property? 
I don't remember. So then your answer that you gave in your deposition when you say could have been Havenhurst, is, was that accurate then when you gave that answer? It could have been. Now, after moving to California, did you and your brothers perform in the Chicago area at any time? Yes. Okay. Now, when you performed in the Chicago area, would Reynard Jones visit you and or your brothers after your performance? No. <clears throat> I just remember my security saying he would always try to get backstage and hassle the security to try to get in that type of thing. Okay. On the occasions that you and your brothers performed in the Chicago area, did you ever see Mr. Jones after any of your concert sessions? I don't remember. On the occasions that you performed in the Chicago area, after your concert sessions, did Mr. Jones ever attempt to get you to listen to music? Did he ever get me to listen to music? Attempt or try to get you to listen to music? Not that I know of. When you would see Raynard Jones, strike that, you did see Raynard Jones in California after moving there, is that correct? Mr. Jackson, I'm going to show you what has been marked for purpose of identification as plaintiff's exhibit number 215 and ask you if you can identify that. Answer, yes. Question at line 21. Can you identify the person in that photograph? Answer at line 23, it's me. Do you recall those questions and you're giving those answers at your deposition in October 1989? If I said it, then it must be accurate, but it, it had to be a better picture than that. can't see that. Jackson, I'm going to show you what has been marked as plaintiff's exhibit number 216, which is a photocopy of a photograph. I ask you if you can identify it. Well, to me it looks like... Uh The great Al Green and uh, Raynard Jones, I think. think that the other person in the photograph is Raynard Jones or is the other person in the photograph plans exhibit 216 Raynard Jones? It looks more like Raynard Jones. It's Two. hard to tell on the Al Green because again your pictures. Does it appear to be a photograph including which includes Raynard Jones? Yes. Mr. Jackson, can you tell me, uh, in the context of, of the Thriller Project, the We Are, we are the World Project, the, uh, what these various entities do, or whether they were involved in those projects at all, uh, MJJ Productions. Uh, what is MJJ Productions? It's my, it's my office where they work with CBS Records on um, packaging, 
art design, answering letters, uh, dealing with the fan club. It's um, our way of working with the world from inside, outside. So then MJJ Productions really uh, promotes and distributes and has something to do with the product that you record. Is that correct? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. MJJ Productions has something to do with your services as a, as a recording artist and the product that you record and sell. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Warner Brothers Publications, Inc. Do you know, you, you know what that company is? Yes. Can you tell us what that company is? It's a movie company, a record company, like CBS, Sony. So did Warner Brothers Publications, Inc. have something to do with uh, the projects, Thriller and uh, We of the World? Not that I know of. Okay. And what about Warner Tamerlane Publishing Corporation? I'm not sure on that. Okay. And USA for Africa Foundation, do you know what that is? Yes. Can you tell us what that is? It was an organization that was set up to distribute funds, uh, relief funds to Africa for the project of We Are the World, which is a song that myself and I know Ricky wrote for Africa. So we, in, I'm sorry, go ahead. We organized all the celebrities together and we sang this song for Africa, USA, United States for Africa. So then the foundation really was the beneficiary of the, of the proceeds of the sale of the product we are, we are the world. That is that a fair statement? It's the idea. How about My Jack Music? I'm not sure if My Jack exists anymore. It's a publishing company. It was a publishing company. But you're not sure it exists now? I'm not positive. Did it exist at the time that uh, Thriller was uh, distributors now? I think so. And the same is true when We Are the World was distributed? I'm not sure, sir. Mm -hmm. Is, is, was My Jack or is My Jack your publishing company, music publishing company? Is it my publishing company? Was it when it, when it was in oh, existence yes. or whether it, it is still yes. in existence, your publishing company? Yes. Okay. And you don't know whether it still exists? I'm not sure. Mm. Did you, uh, do you know when uh, My Jack Music was formed? No. But when it was in existence, it was wholly owned by you? Yes. Did you have a publishing company for My Jack? Um, I think My Jack was the first one. Okay. Do you now have, a, you have another publishing company now? Yes. What is the name of that publishing company? Well, there's uh, ATV Music. ATV Music? Yes. Okay. And it's a publishing company? Yes. I'll try not to repeat uh, some of the things that have been asked you. Um, was there a time that you were the lead singer of the Jackson Five? Yes. And was that during the time that the Jackson 5 was under recording contract to Motown? We were in the Jackson 5 before signing with Motown. But you were the lead singer during the time that the Jackson 5 was signed to Motown? Yes. And then was there a time that the Jackson Five became the Jacksons? Yes. Were you the lead singer of the group known as the Jacksons? Yes. Would the time when 
the Jackson 5 became known as the Jacksons, would that have been around 1976, 77? I'm not sure. Was there a time when the Jacksons were signed uh, under a recording agreement to CBS? Yes. And you were still a member of the Jacksons at that time? Yes. Was there a time when you became a, uh, to strike that, was there a time when you recorded separately from the Jacksons uh, under contract with CBS? Yes. Let me show you a document and ask you if you've ever seen it before. To show it to uh, Cotton. Thank you. Could you tell us what that document is? Looks like a recording contract. Would you, uh, what is the date in the right hand corner, of page one? November 1st, 1978. Okay. And would, be fair, would it be fair to say that that's a, an agreement between the Jackson 5 Inc. and Quincy Jones Productions? No. You ever seen that before? I probably have, but I don't remember. I signed a million papers. I'm sure. Let me ask you to turn to the last page. Do you recognize the signatures on the right side underneath the Jackson 5 ink? Yes. Can you tell us what the signatures those are? The first, the first one looks like Joseph Jackson. It's kind of hard to see. The second one looks like Michael Jackson. And does that look like your signature? <laughs> yes. Okay. Now. The other one looks like Quincy Jones. Okay, thank you. And go back to page one. Paragraph numbered one. Could you read the last sentence in that paragraph, please? We shall provide that Epic shall not have any other person remix. No, no, pa I'm sorry, page one, paragraph one, number one, the last sentence. Paragraph one, number one, the last sentence. Right. It's right here, isn't it? Starts out the time. The, oh, paragraph, I'm sorry. The time and place of recording such masters. The selection of compositions to be embodied thereon and all individuals rendering services in connection with the recording of the masters shall be mutually agreed upon by you and artists. Okay, now, was this the agreement that was signed with Quincy Jones Productions? for the production of your first solo album. Now, do, do you recall, Mr. Jackson, that this was the, and I'm, I'm interested in refreshing your recollection about the time. 
okay. November 1st, 1978. Okay. Would this have been, a, have been about the time that you were signed to do your first solo album? I'm not sure. You're not sure? No. Okay. Do you remember what year it was that your brothers and you signed with CBS as the Jackson? No. Now, I picked up that agreement again, and uh, I want to look at a uh, paragraph. You've been in the record business for quite some time, have you not? Quite some time. And do you understand that second sentence in paragraph one to say, that when it says selection of the compositions, do you know what that means? Sure. What does that mean? The selections choosing the songs. Right, and that means, and does that mean that the disagreement says that the choice of, of the, the right to choose the songs is between you and Quincy Jones mutually? Mutual agreement, yes. Right. Okay. We do it together. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing with this document, and then we, we can leave it alone. Look down at the bottom of the first page, it's par paragraph two, the last sentence, right after the part that's been inked out. Yes. Could you read that, please? We shall provide that Epic shall not have any other person remix or re-edit any masters produced by you here under without first providing you with a reasonable opportunity to perform such remixing and or re-editing as Epic shall require. Well, what do you understand that to me? Well, let me read it again. Well, it says, uh, without providing a reasonable opportunity to perform such remixing, and or re-editing as Epic shall require. It's just saying um, that Epic, um, that, that it's between Quincy and myself to remix or re-edit the songs on the album. And if any other outside person comes in and wants to work on the album, it has to be an agreement with us. Right now, in your experience in the record business, would it be fair to say that, that under this agreement, Epic would have final approval on the mix, on the edit. Yeah, is that true? Argument. Yeah. <laughs> Does the record company always have the right to approve uh, the mix and the edit Objection on the final have. master? Not the final. When you deliver a master to the record company, can they reject it? Can they what? Reject it? They can reject it. That's fine. That's all I wanted to know. I don't get what this has to do with. Now, under the, the first, under the first, uh, or the Jacksons' first contract with uh, CBS as recording artists, do you recall whether or not the Jacksons had the right to, under that contract, to provide or to, to supply music or to produce a certain number of songs for album? Under the Epic contract? Yes. <coughs> I'm not positive, but I think we had the right to three songs per album. Do you recall who produced the first uh, CBS album on, on, on the Jackson? Yes. Who was that? Gamble and Huff. And you recall how many tunes you, you sang three that, you, that uh, the Jacksons had the right to provide on that album? I sang three to the Did Jacksons. Did you just say three or? Uh, in writing. Yes. In writing three. Yes, that me and my brothers. I'm not positive, but as I think. Mm -hmm. All right, you say in writing, but is there a difference then? You're saying that the contract provided that you had three, but in reality you only had, uh, you had another number? Is that what you're saying now? No, it was the way you worded it that uh, confused me. Well, what I'm trying to find out is, on the first album of the Jacksons, 
under the CBS contract. How many tunes did you have the right to provide on that album? You remember? I think it was three. You think it was three? Now, did that mean that you had the right to write three tunes, find three tunes from somebody else, or what did that mean? Write three tunes. Okay. And did the Jacksons write three tunes on that album? Yes, we did. Do you recall the, the name of that album, the first album? I think. I'm not would it have been, would it have been going De places? It could have been. been the or Destiny, I'm not sure. Now, how did, if you had the contractual right to, to, to uh, have so, so many songs on the album, and let's say two or three, do you recall how many songs that, that you guys wrote for that uh, album? I don't remember. You don't remember. Normally, in, in your experience in the business, if you're going to have so many tunes on an album, how many albums, how many songs would you put together for final selection? How many songs would you write for the album? If you had a right to provide two or three, how many songs do you think you would have normally put together? Oh, gee. Fifteen. Now, did of those, let's assume 15, were all those written by the Jackson? Yes. Jackson. No outside writers? No outside writers. Do you recall a, a tune named Blues Away? Yes. Who wrote that? I wrote that one. Was that solely by yourself or with your brother Randy? Solely by myself, as I remember. How about a song called Different Kind of Lady? What about it? Do you recall that song? Yes. Who wrote it? Uh, I think it was credited as the Jacksons. Who wrote it? Uh, gee, Jackie, myself, Randy, Tito. I think we all wrote it. We all wrote it. By the way, did you guys have a publishing company at that time? Yes. What was the name of the publishing company? I'm not sure. Was the publishing company owned by the Jackson Five? Yes. Was Blues Away the first song that you'd ever recorded, written, that was, that was recorded? No. Had you uh, written songs pre previously that were recorded before Blues Away? Oh, yes. Can you name some of those songs that you had written and, and were recorded and released? That's different. <laughs> That's different. Well, let me go back then. Was Blues Away the first song that you had written that was recorded and released? Yes. Well, we saved ourselves a lot of We time sure then. did. Now, do you recall the name of the second album that was recorded by the, the Jacksons under the CBS agreement? Gee, I'm not positive. I don't know if it was Triumph or Destiny or Going Places. I'm not sure what order. Do you recall that uh, were all the songs uh, provided for that album by, by the Jacksons? I mean the second CBS album. You understand? Do you understand my question? What's the name of the album? Well, what if it, what if I told you it was Destiny? Would that uh, sound inaccurate? I'm not positive. All right, for the Destiny album, then, do you recall how many songs were, uh, were, were there any songs provided by outside writers on Destiny? I'm not sure. Do you recall who produced Destiny? The 
Jackson's produced Destiny. Would it be safe to assume that the Jacksons produced it and they had a right to provide all the songs in that album? I'm not sure. Do you know a woman named Regina Hooks? I've heard of the name, but I, I can't place the face. she provide any songs for the Destiny album? Not that I know of. Has she provided any songs for Anita Jackson's album? I don't even know who she is. provided a song that was used on one of the albums when it was released, she would have been given credit. Is it speculation, Mr. Jackson, to, to assume that if someone wrote a song for one of your albums that they would get credit? Of course they would get credit. It's not speculation, is it? If someone wrote a song, we would be honest and give them credit. No. In fact, it's your policy, right, uh, Mr. Jackson, that whenever a musician or someone uh, provides a uh, help on a song or the bridge or something like that in the arrangement they get credit don't they now the other day you testified that you've written 30 you, you, you've written 30, written and published 30 to 40 tunes as a songwriter is that right something like that i don't know the exact number i've never counted okay. i don't count them So when you write a song, that song is committed and it's not co-written by anybody else, <coughs> excuse me, with anyone else or collaborated with. It's written solely by you. It's your independent work, isn't it? I'm sorry. I didn't understand. There's a song that you write that you take sole credit for. Yes. Your independent creation by you and you only. Yes. And you don't, uh, do you include common musical phrases in your songs that you write? Common musical phrases? Do you know what that means? Yeah, but I don't know if, if you know what it means. Uh, let me ask you. Why don't you tell us what it is? I What's a common it, musical phrase? A common musical phrase? Yes. A musical phrase could mean a note, a tone. You ever heard the term common musical phrase before? Yes, but the way you put it in your question it was different, so I wasn't sure if I understood what you meant. Okay, well, let me ask you. Could you tell us what a common musical phrase is? <laughs> a common musical phrase. <laughs> That's a common musical phrase. That could be a common musical phrase. Have you ever heard the term scenes of fair? Pardon? Scenes of fair. Have you ever heard that term before? Scenes? Spell it. S-C-E-N-E-S. -E yeah. Little line. Right. Affair. Spell it. A F A I R E. Have you ever heard Seems the term before? Affair. No, I never heard that. Okay. Now let me ask you a question again. I mean, I'm not sure your answer was was clear to me. Maybe I've missed it. Uh, when you write a song, that's your sole song that you take credit for by yourself. Yes. Do you use? Is that song independently created by you? Do you All understand the, the question, Mr. Jackson? Absolutely. Okay. Songs that I get, take credit for on my albums that say written by Michael Jackson are written by Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson alone, right? Michael Jackson alone. I wouldn't cheat anybody out of credit. I'm not suggesting you cheat anybody on anything, sir. I mean, I'm, I'm an honest person. Question. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question, to, uh, give you a list of songs and I'm going to ask you some questions about each one of them. Okay. You ever heard of a song called She's Not a Girl? Yes. Who wrote it? 
I wrote it. Was it released? Pardon? Was it recorded and released? It was recorded but never released. It's a, it's a demo. It? Pardon? It's a demo that I did, I think, at the Encino house. You know what year? No. How about a song called You Ain't Gonna Change Nothing? I wrote that. Was that released? No. How about Lucy is in love with Linus? I wrote that. Released? Never released. Who is the girl with her hair down? I wrote that. Released? Never released. Lonely man. I wrote that. Released? Never released. Going to Rio? Going where? Going to Rio. Going to Rio. I wrote that. Released? Never released. Recall when you wrote it? No, but it was before uh, Thriller. Before Off the Wall. Tomboy. I wrote that. Released? Never released. You know when you wrote it? How oh, Tomboy for the Bad Album that was after Thriller. So I don't know the dates. Buffalo Bill? Buffalo Bill was written after I wrote uh, Billie Jean. So that was written after the Thriller album. Released? Yes. Never released. Al Capone. Al Capone was written after the Thriller album. Never released. Michael uh, McKellar? Michael McKellar? Yes. How do you know about Michael McKellar? I wrote Michael McKellar. You wrote it? Yes. Released? Never released. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. I wrote that. You know when? Thank you for life was written, boy, way before Off the Wall. I don't know the date, but it had to be around, if I could guess. Would you like for me to guess? No, I don't want you to guess. Okay, then. I can't say. Was it ever released? Never released. Much too soon. I wrote much too soon. Released? Never released. What a lonely way to go. I wrote that one. You know when? Before Off the Wall. Released? Never released. Who do you know? I wrote Who Do You Know. Released? Never released. You are a liar. I wrote, you are a liar. Released? Never released. Cry? I wrote cry. Released? 
Never released. Make a wish. I can't recall that one. Give, just give me a minute. I can't recall that one. Crack kills. I wrote that one. Release? Never release. Free? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Fly away? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Children's Hour. The, the Children's Hour? I wrote that one. Was that released? Never released. Baby Smiles? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. A Baby Smiles? I wrote that one. Same one. Sister Sue? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Little Susie? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Tragedy of a, te of a cheerleader? Tragedy of a cheerleader. I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Get around? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Little girls? I can't recall that one. In the valley? I wrote that one. Released? Okay, hold on a second. No, little girls, I do remember. Yes, I wrote that one. Never released. And, and in the valley? I wrote that one. Was that released? Never released. Red Eye? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. I forgive you. <clears throat> I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Why shy? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. I have this love of me. I wrote that one. Is that released? Never released. Lama Lola? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. California Grass? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Kentucky? I wrote that one. You know when you wrote that one? Seventy something, but I don't remember exactly. Someone put your hand down. I wrote that one. Released? That one has an interesting story. Uh, I wrote the original, and then it was changed, in which I co-wrote it with Teddy Riley. And it was released, but through some type of Pepsi contest, uh, a limited edition of it was released. Do you know what year that was? 
big flash or whatever. I think. Okay, do you know where you, your children are? I about that one. Was that released? Never released. Bad girl? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Lonely Bird? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Smooth Criminal? I wrote that one. Released? Yes. What album? It's a bad album. PYT, the original version. <laughs> I wrote that one with uh, Greg Filling Gaines. Do you know what year that was? No. Cheater. I wrote that one. I wrote that one. I co-wrote that one. Was it released? Never released. People have to make some kind of joke? I wrote that one. Released? Never released. Is that co-written? I don't think so. I'm not positive. It could have been co-written with my brother, but I'm not positive. I think I wrote that one myself. Love never felt so good. I wrote that. Released? Never released. You have a co-writer? Give me a minute to think. I'm not positive on that. It could have been a co-writer on that one. Would it have been Paul Anka? Could have been, yes. All right now? I wrote that. Solely or co-written? I think I wrote that with my brother. Was it ever released? No. Scared of the moon? Yes. Scared of the moon? Uh, never been released. Co-written. Buzz Cohen? Yes. Neverland Landing? Co-written. Released? Never released. We Are the Ones? I wrote that one. Co-written or written solely? Solely. Released? Never released. What was your life? What's your life? It's called What's Your Life. Okay. I wrote that with my brother, Jermaine. Released? Never released. Fantasy. Co-written with my brother. Released? Never released. The sky is the limit? Co-written. With whom? 
My brother. Released? Never released. Saved by the bell? Co-written with my brother. Released? Never released. Chicago, 1945. Co-written. Released? Never released. Make or break? Co-written. Released? Never released. Turning me off? I wrote that uh, co-written. Released? Never released. Sunset Driver? Co-written. Released? Never released. Far, far away? I wrote that. Released? Never released. Do you have a co-writer on that one? Not that I can remember. State of shock? Released. Co-written. Get on the floor. Released. Co-written. Let me ask you about PYT. Well, before I ask you that, of these songs that I've just asked you about that have never been released, do you recall when, how far back they go in terms of time when you first wrote them? Some of them. What would you say is the furthest one that goes, the one that goes back the furthest? Thank you for life. year. Seventy three, seventy four, something like that. Now, were these songs, when you wrote them, you would go back to them from time to time? Do you understand my questions, Jeff? When I wrote them, would I go back to them time Yeah, well, let me ask you this. What form would they, when, <coughs> when you write them, what form would they be in? Would they be in the form of lead sheets? Would they be in the form of notes? Or would they, would they be on a cassette? In writing, you mean pen to paper? Right. Um, God, I've written things on toilet paper. It could be anything right, whatever's well, the closest around I've right written now, walls the other day that you testified that you when you write you hum them or hum the songs or the rhythms into a tape that's right i'm asking you now the songs that i've just read you that have been not that are not released or have not been released that's right uh, do those are those maintained in the, in the form of a cassette sometimes sometimes uh, of the songs that I've just read you that were unreleased, how many of those would you say that are in cassette form? Most of them are in cassette. And where are those maintained? Are they maintained in your collection? Yes. Now, the one song that I, you just we just talked about that was just uh, done last year, if you recall, for the Pepsi project or some of these projects, I'll lay my hands on it. Someone put your hand down. Mm -hmm. I believe it was called Someone Put Your Hand Down. Hand out. Right? And that was original was changed, you say, but it was co it was co written with Teddy Riley. Yeah. Was it originally co written with Teddy Riley? No. So then was it, was it in that form, a cassette form, and you went back and pulled it out and 
you dressed it up with Teddy and you just did things to it? And... Yes. I wrote it originally years ago, then uh, poured it out, and uh, Teddy loved it, I loved it, and we made some changes. Just changed the verse. Mm -hmm. And I gave him co-writer's credit. Okay. Now, we've talked a lot about your collection. Let's try to nail this down. Is that the collection that you've maintained at your home for a very long time? Do you understand my question? Collection that I've maintained a long time. Do yep. you understand my question? Yep. Repeat your question. This, the collection that we've talked about. Of, these songs. Uh, right, these songs. The songs. Right, and the cassettes that you've written you go back to from time to time. We loosely called it a collection. It was your choice of words, a collection. I'm asking you, were these songs maintained in that collection at your home, one central location? Yes. Right. Mr. Jackson, let me read you another list of songs and ask you pretty much the same kind of questions, whether they were released and what other issues that may come up on each one of them. The song Blues Away, we just covered. But just for the sake of putting it in its own little pigeonhole with the others. Would you recall when Blues Away was released? No. You know, do you recall when Blues Away was released? No, I don't. But that was the first song that, that you had written that was released, right? Is that correct? Yes. Don't stop till you get enough. Was uh, that tune released? Yes. Do you recall what year? It was on the Off the Wall album. So, 79, was it? Did Greg Phil and Games do something on that song? Yes. The bridge. Da 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 He no. created that. Okay. Was he given credit for that on that album? Or that book that song? Yes, he was. What was that co arranging or arranging or co written? Arranging, just arranging. Working day and night? And night? What what about it? When was that released? That's the Off the Wall album again. I think 79, I'm not sure. Want to be starting something? Was that written by you? Yes. What year was that released? That was for the Thriller album, so that would be, I think, 83. Billie Jean, was that written by you? Yes. And was that released? Yes, Billie Jean was released. What album was that? Thriller album. Beat It? Was that released? That was released. Written by you? I wrote Beat It also, yes. What album was that? That was the Thriller album. The Girl Is Mine? Yes. You wrote that? Yes. And was that released? That was released. To which album? Solo album. First single. Duet. I Just Can't Stop Loving You? Was yes. that released? Yes. Was it written by you? Yes. Bad album. And Bad, was that written by you? Yes. What album? Bad album. Do you recall the year? No. Beg your pardon? No. No. 
the way you make me feel? Did you write that? Yes. Was that released? Yes. What album? Bad. Dirty Diana? I wrote Dirty Diana. Was that released? Yes. Uh, what album? Bad. Speed Demon, did you write that? Yes. What album did I appear on? Bad album. Liberian Girl? Was, did you write that? Yes. And was that released? Yes. And what album? Bad album. Muscles, did you write that? Yes. Was that released? Yes. By whom? Dinah Ross. What year? Do you know? I don't remember. Another part of me? Yes. Did you write that? Yes. And was that released? Yes. What album did you call? The first release for Captain EO, which was a short film. Um, I think it, I think it was for the bad album. Was there a, a later version of PYT? Yes. Do you know who wrote that? James Ingram and Quincy Jones. Did you get co-writer's credit on that one? No, because I didn't write that one. I wrote the original with uh, Greg Filling Games. What happened to the original? Quincy wanted a fast song. Mine was mid-tempo. Now, I'm going to ask you, of the following songs, and I'll read them rather quickly, I'll ask you one question about them. Let me read them first. Teeter, people have to make some kind of joke. Love never felt so good. All right now. Scared of the moon. Never la Neverland landing. We are the ones. What's your life? Fantasy. The sky is the limit. Saved by the bell. Chicago 145. 1945. Uh, 1945. We'll say 145. 1945. Of those songs, uh, uh, and, and, and excuse me, let me add Sunset Driver far, far away in a state of shock. Are those songs in the portfolio of a publishing company? You the, the first time you asked me about far, far away, did I tell you I didn't remember it? You said you couldn't remember whether you wrote that yourself or it was co-written. I remember it now. There's Corey. Do you know who the publishing company is on those songs? No. Is it your publishing company? Yes, but I don't know the name. song called Sympathy? Yes. You know when? I don't remember. You don't remember what year? No. Co-wrote it. With whom? With whom? Yes. John Barnes. Was it released? Yes. Did your sister Maureen sing it? Yes. Did you know a woman named Joyce McCrae? I think so. 
she ever work for you? I don't think so. She ever work for Motown? I don't think so. Pardon me? I don't think so. Do you have a song in your collection about that time by Sam and Dave called I, I'm a Soul Man? I don't know if I bought that or not. I buy a lot of records, but I don't know if that was one of the ones Do I Do you bought. know whether you bought I'm a Soul Man or about the time you wrote Centipede? Gee, I wouldn't know. I beg your pardon? I wouldn't know. Ever hear of a song called You Were There? You Were There. I sure. Joined. I wrote it with uh, Buzz Cohen for Sammy Davis Jr. Was that for the 60th anniversary celebration for Sammy Davis? Yes. You remember when you and Buzz Cohen wrote it? No. Was the answer that was that no? You don't yes. remember? No, I don't. You remember what year? No. You remember where you were, you and he were when you wrote that song? Yes. Um, I don't know the exact location. It's a place like the Shrine Auditorium. It could have been the Shrine. I'm not sure. You wrote it with him at the Shrine? Yes. Is that also in the portfolio of your publishing company? Yes. Now, when you began work on your first album, first solo album, which was later to be called Off the Wall, did you have a stockpile of, of songs that you had written uh, to be submitted for that album? For the album? Off the Wall. Did I have a stockpile of songs that I've written for the album Off the Wall? That you, that you were, had written that you were submitting to, for the album. When I, when I write songs for an album, uh, for instance, I'll write 50 to 60 songs for just one album, just for nine songs, you know, and I'll pick from those. Did so, you write 50, 60 songs for Off the Wall? Yes, a lot of songs. Can you think of any? You named a lot of them. A lot of them that were on the list that I named just a moment some, ago? Some of them were. Some of them. How many of those, uh, what was the procedure that you and Quincy Jones employed to select out, uh, songs for that album? I, I'd write the song, do a demo, and play it for them say if he'd like it or not and most likely he'd love it and we would record it how many songs did you have on the album off the wall I'm not sure but I think it's nine how many of those nine were yours that you wrote Don't stop till you get enough. Um, get on the floor. Um, working day and night. Three, three or four. I'm not sure. How many did? Of, of the three or four, I'm just right there, four of the, the Off the Wall album, how many of your songs that, that, were, that you had written did you and Quincy consider for that album? I don't remember. A moment ago you said you'd write 50 songs, about 50 songs for uh, a, a nine-song album. That's right. Did you did you uh, present or cons consider uh, with Quincy 50 songs for that album? No. And did you and Quincy consider songs by outside writers on the Off the Wall album? 
Oh boy. Um, yes, yeah, she's out of my life. Was written by Tom Baylor, who I who I've known for years and years, and he's an old friend. Any other outside writers? Paul McCartney. That's all I can think of. Did Rod Temperton submit some tunes for that album? On the, uh, he wrote Off the Wall, Rock With You. Yeah. Burn This Disco Out, something like that. Can't think of any others. When did you first meet Rod Timmons? I don't remember. You don't remember? No. I meet so many people. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I meet so many people. Was when well, you did meet Rod Temperton during Temperton during the course of the Awful Wall Project? Did you not? Yes. Was that the first time you've been? Yes. Would that have been uh, sometime in 1978, 79? Sure. Uh, Mr. Jackson, um, between the Off the Wall album and the Thriller album, did you meet with Rod Temperton in, in a hotel in London? Hotel in London. Sorry, I don't remember that. Now, Rod Temperton submitted some songs for the Thriller album. I think it's those three. Oh, this is something I'm leaving out. Was there a song called Rolling of the Dice? Yes, Rolling the Dice that we did a demo on at Havenhurst, but we we never released it. We didn't think it we didn't think it was strong enough. Was there another song called Hot Street? Yeah, I like Hot Street. I love that one. But they didn't Quincy and Rod didn't think it was good enough. I thought it was wonderful. Now then you recall when Mr. Temperton for the thrill album? No, I don't. Do you recall where it was that you first heard the songs that he he brought for the thrill album? Yes. Where were you? Encino House. At your residence? Yes, my studio. And who was present? Quincy Jones. Rod Temperton, Bruce Wadian, and myself. Who is Bruce Wadian? Bruce Wadian is um, the engineer. When he and Quincy came to your studio to present the song? He played on cassette, which we went into my... Um, I think it was Quincy's car or my van and because we don't have a cassette machine system in my studio um, but he came with a keyboard and in the keyboard it's his performances of the different sounds he can MIDI those sounds and, uh, and put them up on tape on the 24 track 
and uh, put them on tape. And it was a way of testing to see if I liked the songs or not with my voice, trying different harmonies, trying the songs. Like I said, we did Thriller, which was um, called Give Me Some Starlight, Starlight Sun. Starlight, starlight sun. That's how it went. So it was a way of just testing, you know, right, now, what I wanted to do. Okay, now he laid the structure of the very songs out in front of you, and you recorded, you, you, you sung each one of them. Is that correct? Yes. And among the songs you sung was the one, Starlight. Right. Did you make any changes to that, to Starlight? Yeah, the lyrics and the title, and we added Vincent Price's voice. We changed it into Thriller. Well, she did ask me which would I like better, to be a song about, you know, let the sun shine in type of thing, or Thriller. And I thought kids would enjoy something more fun like Thriller, so. We went with the thriller idea. Did you change? Did you change Starlight musically? Um. Yeah, somewhat. M musically, it was the same, but we added other sounds and things like that. After you made the changes, do you know whether or not Mr. Temperton created a lead sheet for what was now Thriller? I don't think he reads music. He doesn't, did, he doesn't use the lead sheet. Did Quincy Jones create a lead sheet for what was I, now Thriller? I don't think so. At least I didn't see one. Right. Did you 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 sang the other songs? As